my dear brothers and sisters today i would like to speak to you something about the first reading that is first reading is from the book of numbers chapter 11 verse 4 onwards book of numbers chapter 11 verse 4 onwards this is about selective memory selective remembering this is a problem which we all face in our daily life we all have the same tendency of these israelites who had the selective memory and we also have this selective memory or selective remembrance let's remember re- read this passage then you will understand the rabble among them had a strong craving and the israelites also wept again and said if only we had meat to eat now we need to understand these people now rabble among them had a strong craving and the israelites also wept that what does it mean it shows it shows there are two groups of people among these people who are followed for following moses from egypt there were not only jewish people even non jewish people were also present non israelites also followed moses that is what it's mentioned here the rabble among them had a strong craving they had their own plans and their own intentions their own cravings looking at them the israelites also wept again they also thirst for it we read like this in the exodus chapter 12 verse 38 Exodus chapter 12 verse 38 when israelites came out of egypt it was 37 onwards let's read 37 the israelites journeyed from rameses to sukoth let's repeat the israelites journeyed from rameses to sukoth the israelites journeyed from rameses to sukoth about 600000 men about 600000 men on foot on foot besides children besides children so 600000 people only men the almost same number of women too and children so it is around more than 1 million 1.2 million people but later when they entered into the promised land they were almost 2 million people so these many people came out of egypt the israelites but always remember it is not only israelites alone there were other groups also joined with them was 38 a mixed crowd also went with went up with them a mixed crowd also went up with them a mixed crowd means it may be the israelites mixed with other groups it may be some other people who are also slaver slaves in egypt and when the israelites came out they also took their friends because once we are in another country for more than 400 years there is a possibility that you may make friendship with other group other denomination other nationalities other uh, tribes so they also made some friendship with these other group other tribes and they also join with them why did they join because first of all they are very influential secondly they are very rich they are wealthy they are brilliant they have the capacity and third they also understood this god of yahweh god of israel is very powerful than the god of Egy- egyptians is better to be with these people than being in egypt so they followed because they had b- flocks and herds so a mixed crowd also went with them and lived stock in great numbers both flocks and herds so they mixed with the jewish people they lived with them and later this same group they started these unnecessary thoughts unnecessary cravings so this is what happens when we compromise when we compromise so the this group they don't have sincere desire to follow moses they don't have sincere love for the yahweh they don't have a commitment and faithfulness to the yahweh whom israelites believe and follow therefore they only want pleasure they want either in the wilderness or in egypt they wanted pleasure either in the wilderness or in egypt they wanted to eat meat either in the wilderness or in egypt they wanted to eat fish they wanted to have luxurious life so that is what happened here rabble among them had a strong craving they started saying we need meat and then some israelites also joined with them so this is what happens when we live in a community of mixed community of many religions and many nationalities many kinds of cultures and uh, faith faith there is a possibility that we may be influenced by the wrong faith wrong culture wrong national wrong feelings wrong emotions wrong cravings even though we have very strong foundation in the faith in jesus but because 
since we are being influenced by many cultures and many kinds of faith there is a possibility that we may be changed we may be influenced by the wrong cravings and then we we go for wrong intentions praise the lord praise the lord so they said if only we had meat to eat so they want to eat meat where in the wilderness first of all they have enough and more cattles donkeys camels so many animals which they collected from egypt and they were accompanying with them they could eat any time but they wanted to keep it for breeding and take carrying the heavy materials that they carry maybe their cloth and the tent and many other things they had to carry therefore they used these camels and donkeys to carry so therefore they didn't kill those animals but at the same time they had a desire for meat in the wilderness so but at the same time remember god is already giving them heavenly food manna which they are not happy with praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus we also read from the bible exodus chapter 16 there was lack of food they said we don't have anything to eat they were complaining about food in fact when they started the public i mean the uh, the wilderness journey they didn't have food in initially they cried there is no food we are hungry that was their initial cry and then we read like this exodus chapter 16 verse 3 if the israelites said to them the israelites said if only them, we had died by the hand of the lord in the land of egypt if only we had died by the hand of the lord in the land when of egypt when we sat by the flesh pots when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread and ate our fill of bread for you have brought us out into this wilderness for you have brought us up into this to wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger to kill this whole assembly with hunger See, they were complaining about food now numbers chapter 11 they are complaining about the variety of food First they were complaining about food and God gave them manna the heavenly food now they are fed up with the same food and they want variety this is you and me my dear brothers and sisters we are not happy with what we are when god when we are in need of food we cried and god gave us food and we called manna precious food heavenly food now we are looking at this manna down we degrade manna heavenly food familiarity breeds contempt when we are so familiar with certain things even if it is the most holy thing we will look it down we won't value it only when it miss it when you miss it you will value it this happens in our lives too when we are so familiar with certain people certain things certain holy things certain prayers certain you know holy eucharistic celebrations and uh, blessed sacrament adorations when we are so familiar with it we don't value it after some time we say oh, every day in front of the blessed sacrament every day holy mass we get fed up this is this is human tendency and the lord was so upset with this attitude of the people in fact god gave them the most precious food from heaven let's read continue reading numbers chapter 11 verse 5 6 onwards we remember we five orders the we remember we remember the fish the fish we used to eat we used to eat See, they are talking about fish now they want fish in the wilderness so moses has to cast the net in the sands and get fish for them that is what they expect now we remember the fish we used to eat we remember the fish we used to in eat in egypt in egypt for nothing for nothing See they forgot they were working hard day and night as slaves. They forgot about they only remember now fish. They don't remember all the hard work and the toils that they went through. Even read Exodus chapter 1 and verse 14 we read like this Exodus chapter 1 verse 14 verse 13 onwards. We read like this. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing task. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing task. On the task. Israelites. On the Israelites. And made their lives bitter. And made their lives with bitter. With hard service. With hard service. In mortar. In mortar. And brick. And brick. And every kind of field labor. And in every kind of field they labor. They were ruthless. They were ruthless. In all the task. In all the task. That they imposed on them. That they imposed on them. All these things they forgot. all the ruthlessness of the egyptians all the beatings floggings insult humiliation hard work which they did they all forgot all these things are forgotten they only remember fish 
fish pots fish curry so we remember the fish we used to eat in egypt for nothing they said nothing in fact they were working hard day and night and they got one small fish tail and they are happy with that my dear brothers and sisters this is what happens when we get fed up with our spirituality we remember the small pleasures which we enjoyed in the past we forget the blessings of god we forget all the hardships that we went through after the sin there are people who even now think of the old past sins but they forgot the consequences of the sins which we enjoyed we experienced this is called selective memory selective remembrance we also have this tendency to have this selective memory and selective remembrance and now they are remember not only fish the cucumber the melons maybe watermelon or some other melons the leeks the onions the garlic all the spices i don't think they had these food every day maybe once in a week or once in a month they used to get a small garlic and they are thinking about it now in the wilderness since there is no garlic available in the wilderness and they know it is impossible to get all these things in the wilderness they know this wilderness journey is only for some time still they are not happy still they are not able to accept it moses remember these people are all slaves and they came from the slavery to this wilderness but moses was in the pa pharaoh's palace he left the palace and has come he really lost lots of pleasure but still he never claimed he never complained but these people who came from such a tragic experiences now they are complaining and go and thinking of past memories of selective memories of these pleasures the minute pleasures that they enjoyed praise the lord praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters when we don't enjoy the spirituality and spiritual pleasure happiness of the lord we will think of going back to the old pleasures of evil and slavery praise the lord praise the lord that is human tendency we think of going back to all these childish disappointments now they are thinking they are thinking of childish disappointments that they had cucumber onion leeks and garlic melons fish these are the complaints that they have and verse 6 we read but now our strength is dried up but now our strength is dried up that is a pure lie now they start saying lie because how can their strength is dried up because they are eating manna morning in the evening quails the flesh and morning bread they are eating every day and they have become very strong heavily strength is there in them but just because they could not eat meat and fish and melons and and garlic they are complaining and they say our strength is dried up there is nothing at all that there, there is nothing at all but this manna to look at but this manna to look at they got fed up with manna sometimes it happens to the children every day there is every day there is something uh, some people say oh, every day this uh, upama every day this idli every day this so they get fed up with uh, same kind of food every day they complain to their parents because they all want variety praise the lord praise the lord and these they are exactly the same the disciples i mean the, the, these uh, israelites it this shows that we we are the descendants of israelites so we are complaining saying every day the same manna look at it and verse 7 we read now the manna so now the bible speaks about highly about manna manna was like coriander seed now the manna was like coriander seed and its color was like the color of gum resin and its color was like the color of was gum resin was it the people went around and gathered it the people went around and gathered it ground it in mills ground it in mills or beat it in mortars or beat it in mortars then boiled it in pots then boiled it in pots and made cakes of it and made cakes of and it and the taste of it was like the taste of cakes baked with oil and the taste of it was like the taste of cakes so baked with oil so they could make varieties of food based from this manna they made it in fact varieties of cake and uh, uh, many other things out of these and it tasted so big good but still they are not happy they want fish verse 9 when the dew fell on the camp in the night when the dew fell on the camp in the night the manna would fall with it the manna would fall with it 
and verse 10 we read Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families so Moses heard it all the people are weeping for meat fish garlic melons leeks and then all at the entrance of their tents in, they, they they could have cried inside the tent but they want to show it to the public and they are crying in front of the tent so that let everybody see i'm crying so they are worth you know sometimes children do this just to get attention of their parents they scream and cry and roll around on the floor in front of the parents and if nobody is there they will not cry the moment the father or mother comes they will scream and start crying because they just want to show off show in front of their parents they are not happy now these people they are doing that kind of childish disappointments and they're doing it in front of Moses so that Moses and the Lord should hear it, see it. Therefore, they were crying and weeping at the entrances of their tents. Everyone, just imagine, in front of all the tents, one family, one family, crying. Then the Lord became very angry. Then the Lord became very angry. And Moses was displeased. And Moses was displeased. God was up upset. Moses also was upset. Moses is upset with two people God and also the people God is upset with everyone and we read like this verse 11 so Moses said to the Lord so Moses said to the Lord why have you treated your servant so badly why have you treated your servant so badly why have I not found favor in your sight why have I not found favor in your that sight that you lay the burden of all these people on me that you lay the burden of all these people on me now, the moment he found these people are terrible creatures, Moses is excusing himself, washing his hand, and he said, you are people, and he put it on me. Sometimes husband and wife do the same thing. When the, when the phone call comes from the school saying, your child has done these things, and, and suddenly husband says, see what your, daughter, what your son has done? Then suddenly has, wife says, it is your son. They don't want to, they want to wash their hands and put the blame on the other person and not ready to take the responsibility. Here Moses do the same thing. When there is a big problem and all they, these people are rebellious, Moses said, it's your children and you put it on my head. I'm not responsible. I didn't give birth. So in fact, he said, I didn't give birth. Let's read verse 12. Did I conceive all these people? Did I conceive all Did these people? Did I give birth to them? Did I give birth you to gave them. birth. You I didn't give birth. Them. That you should say to me, that you should say carry them in your bosom carry them in your as bosom. a nurse carries a sucking child as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors so you can see everyone is angry nobody is happy people are angry with because of garlic and onion and melon and all this kind of thing and moses is angry because people are behaving like this and moses is angry with god also because people are like this and god poor god we need to pray. So, my dear brothers and sisters, exactly the same thing is happening in our lives too. We also do the same thing, making God upset. Because we, are, we have selective memories. We look at others, see, look at them, they never go to church, but they are blessed. Look at these people, they never pray, but they have no problem. I go to church every day, and I have every day problem. And then, and we complain, we gossip, we stand outside the tent and scream, and we have a lot of complaints. We don't have melons, cucumber, uh, and leeks. We have all these silly, silly childish disappointments. But at the same time, we forget the blessed sacrament, the manna given to us 24 hours. We have small, small pity, pity uh, cases, pity, pity complaints. But at the same time, we have such a big blessing to be in the presence of God 24 hours. But we forget about all these things. And complaining about nobody appreciated me. No one loved me. No one supported me. No one helped me. These are petty, petty, childish pay disappointments. That is what is controlling us more than Jesus. The manna controls us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read verse 13. Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? Now, where do I get this meat? These people want meat. For they come weeping to me and saying, give us meat to meat. Then verse 14, I'm not able to carry all these people alone for they are too heavy for me. Poor Moses said, it is too heavy for me. Sometimes this is happens to us, my dear brothers and sisters. Sometimes we say, Lord, this is too heavy for me. This ministry is too heavy for me. This family is too heavy for me. 
this duty is too heavy for me this crisis is too heavy for me this insult humiliation is too heavy for me you have all the freedom to complain to god and let's read verse 15 if this is the way you are going to treat me put me to death at once if i have found favor in your sight do not let me see my misery praise the lord praise the lord so he says if this is how you are going to do it better you kill me moses did not want to commit suicide but he want to put the responsibility on god to kill him and he was so disappointed frustrated to the maximum praise the lord praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters but what did god do god did so many things if you want to know continue reading the bible praise the lord praise the lord so the lord said to moses so the gather lord... for me 70 of the elders of israel whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you i will come down and talk with you there and i will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them and they shall bear the burden of the people along with you so that you will not bear it all by yourself when he complained he took his anointing and gave it to everyone praise the lord praise the lord better don't complain if you complain god will take the anointing in you and give it to others and share it with others and say now you stop complaining that itself is a sign the lord had given all these 70 people's anointing already in one person moses he was able to manage 70 people's work together god had given his anointing since he complained and he said i cannot do this that is when the lord divided this anointing many brothers and sisters when god gave you a family god also gave you the provisions to lead the family when god gave you a husband who is very dangerous and disturbing but god also gave you the provision to handle him and when god gave you a wife who is always a irritating nagging woman but god also gave you the the provisions to handle and live and adjust and and not accept when god gave you some children god also gave you the provisions stop complaining stop grumbling through all these god is going to purify you give you a great blessing at the end all these things will be turned into a big blessing romans 8:28